Hey guys, in this video we're taking a look at the Korg Monopoly, which is a vintage synth from the 80s. So in this video I'm just gonna go through the front panel and I'll show you what the synth can do. We'll tweak some knobs, we'll audition some sounds. It's a really beautiful synth, it's one of my favorite synthesizers. It's super creative and inspiring and you can create all kinds of different quirky sounds. Alright, so here we can see the synthesizer itself, it's got these nice wood side panels. It's a really big and hefty and heavy synthesizer, so it's not very practical if you're looking to gig or anything like that. But for a studio piece, it's a perfect unit. It's a great combination of both a monophonic synth and also a paraphonic synth, which means you can still play more than one note at a time, but everything gets run through one filter. All right, so at a super high level, how the synth is broken down is that on the left here, you have controls for the mod wheel and the pitch wheel. Over here, you have controls for two different LFOs. Here you have like a mini effect section, which we'll cover in a sec. Here you have pulse width modulation controls. Then you have some global controls here, like the master tuning and portamento and detuning the four oscillators. Down here you have an arpeggiator. And then here is your main oscillator section. So each row is one oscillator. So one, two, three, four. Finally, here we have our filter. So there's a single low pass filter here. It's a 24 dB filter with resonance cutoff and it's self oscillating. You have two ADSR envelope generators, one for the filter and one for the amplifier. And the filter one can be assigned to some other things as we'll see shortly. You have a white noise generator and then some simple switches for the way it triggers and stuff like that. So I just have one oscillator on right now. You can switch it from triangle, saw, and then you have pulse width modulation and pulse width with manual control. If you set it to pulse width modulation, then you have a control here to assign it to one of the LFOs or to the filter envelope. So for example, we can assign it to LFO 1, LFO 2, or the filter envelope. So you can create some basic stuff like that. And if you switch it to pulse width, then you have manual control over the width here. The other controls for the oscillator is you have an octave controls, which goes from 16 foot all the way to two foot. Incidentally, there's a global transpose here, so you can shift the keyboard. So for example, the ultimate range, if you go down to the lowest transpose and I go 16 foot, we can press it here gets into kind of clicky territory and then obviously you can set the mod wheel or the pitch wheel to control the pitch to go even lower where all we're hearing is clicks basically so that's the effective range and then if I go up to the highest select it to two foot and go up here and then for the other three oscillators the controls are identical you have the waveform the octave and the level and the additional thing you have for the last three oscillators is you have a relative fine tune control and this is how you can make sure that the four oscillators are in tune right now i'm in unison mode and you can go to poly mode later we'll cover that in a sec here but for now if i bring up the second oscillator it basically just doubles it up and then bring up the third and fourth so now we have a four oscillator sound. You can bring this to eight foot. And what's cool about having four different oscillators that you can independently control is that you can have a unison where every oscillator is at a different octave range. You can pick different waveforms. So one of them will do pulse width, the other one triangle. So without any resonance, this is a simple filter sweep with a sawtooth. Very nice warm filter. If I add a bit of noise. Bring up resonance a bit. Bit more. Very creamy kind of wet filter. And then as we go higher and higher, we're gonna eventually get the self oscillation. And now you can hear a sine wave being produced by the filter itself at the frequency of the cutoff. So of course I can turn off my all four oscillators so that all we're hearing is a filter. And I'm gonna turn off the envelope contribution here. So of course we can increase keyboard tracking here to get different ranges of keyboard.
And while we're here, let's demo the envelope generator real quick. So again, you have a dedicated one for the filter and then you have the global amplifier one so we can make more of a pad sound. Increasing the attack, increasing the release. Filter one and then increase the filter uh, or the envelope contribution to the filter which you can go both positive and negative. bring up some of the other oscillators. And of course, like I demoed briefly, we have a white noise generator, which you can blend in. So the module can be assigned to control the amount that LFO1 goes to the filter, the pitch, and to the slave VCO, which we'll control in a sec once we get to the effects here. So if we stick it to the filter, we can see that. So the intensity sets the kind of maximum amount possible and then the mod wheel controls from zero up to the intensity. Here you have the rate of the LFO, which has a bunch of different waveforms. You have triangle, kind of ramp up, ramp down, and square. You can assign it to pitch, which gives you vibrato. And similarly, you can assign the pitch bend to control both the filter or the pitch directly. On top here, you have the global volume setting and you have three different options for high, low, and completely off. LFO2 here has a frequency control, but that one is stuck to a uh, triangle wave, so you can't pick the wave for LFO2. And LFO2 is kind of pre-assigned for certain modulations and you can find it around, like the pulse width modulation is two, and the arpeggiator clock is also synced to LFO2 here. Speaking of the arpeggiator, let's cover that real quick. So it's a very simple arpeggiator, so the way to control it is you have off, on, or latch, which holds the keys down, and then you have two different options. You have one octave, two octaves, full range, and then you have up, down, and up, down. So if I turn it on, create like a plucky shape here. Can we make it two octaves? Full, which will keep the notes in the same order and then kind of repeat it up to five octaves higher. And then again, the clock is controlled by uh, LFO2. And then of course you can set it to latch, which will hold down the notes. Jumping over in the middle here, you have the global portamento, which is just a glide feature. Then you have detune, which will relatively detune the four oscillators from each other, which is useful if you have unison. So if I bring everything back up here, so you can detune them this way. Then up here you have the master tune, which is like a fine tune if you want to make sure you're in tune um, with other instruments, for example. All right, so if we look at these five buttons here, on the left you have a hold button, which is self-explanatory. If you push hold, it'll just kind of keep whatever note you hold down. Then you have two different kind of groups of modes. You have poly and mono. So on the mono side, you have unison, which we've been listening to so far. And unison basically just plays all four oscillators at the same time and kind of stacks them on, on top of each other. If you choose chord memory, you can actually program a set of four notes that you can then transpose by hitting just one finger. You can think of chord memory as almost like setting relative tunings of the four different oscillators in like a musical interval. So if we go to poly, there's two modes, there's unison share and then there's just poly. If you set it to poly, you get what you would expect from a standard polyphonic synth. Of course, in this case, it's paraphonic because everything gets run through one filter, but the, the effect is generally the same. You can now play chords. And you can see the different four lights here telling you which oscillator is currently active. So in poly, Whenever you have just one note pressed, it'll always pick oscillator one. If you have two notes, then it'll pick one and two. So you can see if I hold down this, uh, two will light up. So now you can just play standard stuff. 
And again, what's unique about having a paraphonic synth where you can control the different oscillators of all the voices, quote unquote, is that you can create interesting timbres where every note in your chord has a different timbre and even a different octave range. We can change it so, for example, the second note can be a triangle, the third can be a pulse width, and the last one can be saw. And then I can make one 16 foot, one four foot, one two foot, and one eight foot. <laughs> So while we're in poly mode, let me talk about this auto damp switch. So if you set the auto damp on, then as soon as you release one of the polyphonic notes, it'll kind of attenuate that one. Versus if you set it to off, then as long as any one note is on, all four notes will remain on. And then finally, the other switch here is called trigger. So you can set it to either single or multiple. Uh, single where will only trigger the envelopes once as long as an, any note is on. If you set it to multiple, then even if you're holding a note, if you press another note, it'll re-trigger the envelopes. Again, it's just a way to change the way you perform things on the keyboard. All right, let's jump back into the key assign mode. So in the poly section, we cover the poly mode. Next to that, you have this unison slash share, which is kind of a smart way of assigning oscillators where it'll kind of spread out the voices as much as you need on the keyboard. So if I just play one note, you can see all four oscillators are on. It allocates because all of them are free. If I play two nodes, then it'll kind of split it up so that you have stacks of two. If I play three, then it'll assign three polyphonically. And then if you play four notes, then you're effectively getting the same thing as poly. So again, if I play one, you get all four. If I play two, it becomes like duophonic. Three. And again, because I have every oscillator at a different octave and a different uh, waveform, we're getting these really interesting kind of timbres. So you can split from going one line to two lines and you get these really interesting textures. So it's a little too jarring. So let me switch everything to triangle that way. So one really cool feature you can do with the poly mode is if you turn on the arpeggiator, then every time you press a key, it'll select a different oscillator. And again, if you pick a different timbres and different octave ranges for each of the different oscillators, then you're effectively getting this kind of randomized timbre as you're playing. So I can turn on the arpeggiator so we can see that happening. So you can see it cycling through all the different four oscillators. So I can exaggerate this. So if you want to be able to play that, but manually instead of with the arpeggiator, you have to leave the arpeggiator on, but set LFO2 to its lowest value. That way the arpeggiator is so slow that it'll never actually re-trigger on its own. And then I can play that with by hand. So now every time I hit a key, it's picking a different oscillator and each oscillator has a slightly different timbre. So this is a really kind of inspiring and cool way to play stuff. Bring up a bit of delay via Valhalla delay in the plugin world here. What's really cool here is that you get almost these an illusion of like a rhythmic effect because you have four different oscillators that are always going to cycle one through four. So if you play a lick or a pattern that has more or less than four notes, then the accented note always slightly changes because it'll, as this one counter is looping four, the other one is looping three. So by the time they sync up, uh, things shift around a bit. I don't know if that made sense.
So of course I can turn off the, the arpeggiator here and then we can make like a soft pad sound. set things and I'm gonna demo the chord feature. So the way that works is you have to switch into one of the poly modes and then you hold down a set of notes uh, up to four and then you press chord memory. So now it programmed that in general set of intervals. So now whenever I press a note, it'll transpose that chord up and down. So the more sparse and kind of neutral the intervals are, the better it sounds when you transpose it. So if you stick to like the root and the fifth, then you get a more neutral. What's cool about chord memory is that you can turn on the arpeggiator and the arpeggiator will arpeggiate the different chords. So let's finally demo the effect section in the middle here. So you can turn that on with the yellow button here. And then the effects controls are in the middle. So the effects might be a bit of a misnomer here. It's not an effect in a traditional sense, like a reverb or delay or something. It's basically a combination of FM and hard sync. So you have a bunch of different buttons and knobs here, but the main control is this one here, which you can select the mode of the effect. So the first one is sync. At the bottom you have cross mod or X mod, which in this case is just a frequency modulation between the oscillators. And then in the middle you have a combination of both S and X, so you have sync and cross mod. Sync basically works by one master oscillator and a slave oscillator, so every time one of the oscillators uh, resets its cycle, it forces the other one to reset, basically making sure that they're in tune. And the result of this is that as you sweep one of the oscillators, the instead of changing the frequency, it'll change the timbre of the sound. So if you turn on sync here, what you're gonna see is that instantly the oscillators are gonna be like perfectly in tune. So if I turn that on, so this is without it and with it, you get a much louder sound because all the um, cycles are in tune. So it's being emphasized more. So on its own, hard sync is pretty boring uh, because you're effectively getting just four perfectly in tune oscillators. Where it really starts to shine, like I said, is when you start sweeping the frequency of the slave. So you can do that uh, either with the frequency mod control here, which you can assign to uh, LFO1 or to the filter envelope here. So if I assign it to LFO1, you can control the wave here. So you can hear we're getting that hard sync effect. You can also assign it to the envelope of the filter. So you're almost getting like a vocal wow wow sound, which is really great for lead patches. So I'm gonna bring up some reverb and delay via Valhalla and we're gonna get this really beautiful.
really truly expressive and it really turns this synth into kind of a monster lead synth. This is another thing I love about the Monopoly is that you can really go from kind of one extreme to the other um, compared to the Poly 6, for example, which is pretty kind of tame. It's a really great polyphonic synth, but it's pretty kind of smooth in general. Whereas this one, you can go from kind of smooth, warm brass to standard basses, to leads, to really kind of crunchy, angry leads. So if we switch over to the cross mod, which you're getting FM between the oscillators, here you have the global cross mod amount. And this is a great way to get kind of inharmonic bell-like sounds or like a ring modulator type sounds. So if I turn this more into like a bellish shape here, I'm gonna switch everything to triangles because it'll be easier for the modulation. So if I bring up some reverb and delay. Another way to control the frequency of the slave oscillator is by setting it for either the bend or the mod wheel here, one of the first options. So for example, now I can change the timbre using this pitch control or the pitch wheel. And of course you can set it to both hard sync and FM by flicking the switch in the middle here. In the back of the unit, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but you have your typical CV and gate ins and outs, of course, using the cord uh, hertz volt convention. And what's cool is that there's also an arpeggiator trigger in, so you can fire triggers to advance the arpeggiator if you don't wanna use the built-in clock, which again can result in some interesting uh, sounds because you can combine that with the cord memory or the auto switching oscillators via the poly mode here. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.